It is Monday, September 10th at 1 o'clock Eastern Time, and this is Admissions Live. I am your host, Adam Castro, and on today's live broadcast, we are setting the table for Admissions' largest professional development conference, NACAC 2018 in Salt Lake City, Utah, which begins on September 27th. NACAC has been gracious enough to give us access to two very busy NACAC conference, conference local advisory board members, Michelle Rashich and Matteo Remsberg to talk all things NACAC 18. Admissions Live is part of the Higher Ed Live Network. Our episodes offer you direct access to the best and brightest minds in education. Be a part of our live broadcast by sharing your knowledge. Participate in today's discussion, discussion by tweeting us at hashtag Higher Ed Live. All of our episodes are free and easy to access in the video archives at higheredlive.com or take Higher Ed Live with you on the go by subscribing to the podcast. Higher Ed Live is produced by M. Stoner, a digital first agency committed to tailored solutions that drive real results. Planning, organizing, and maintaining college and university web content is challenging. Competing priorities, resource limitations, and siloed departments all have the potential to derail content projects. Whether you're preparing for a large scale website redesign or building a capital campaign microsite or refreshing, or refreshing a few key pages, you want to get the right content to the right audience on time and on budget. Shannon Lannis, content strategist at M Stoner, leads a content planning and delivery for higher ed websites on September 26th at 12 p.m. Eastern Time, 9 a.m. Pacific Time, hosted by Gather Content. She'll share practical examples and techniques that you can use to avoid common pitfalls of content delivery for your next project. Okay. Well, now that we got that out of the way, we can start our episode today and talk all things NACAC conference in Salt Lake City, Utah. I'm really excited to have Matteo and Michelle on the show today. Uh, just a reminder to our audience that if you have questions uh, for us during the broadcast, you can ask them using hashtag Higher Ed Live. Uh, I'll be monitoring that uh, hashtag during the episode and we'll get to questions uh, and get them to our guests. Uh, so why don't we jump right into it? Um, and I'm going to give my guests a chance to introduce themselves, tell us a little about their professional experience, some interesting facts, and how they got involved with the local advisory board. So, Michelle, why don't we start with you? All right, great. Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, depending on where you are uh, listening in from. Um, this is my 18th year in college counseling. Um, I uh, moved back to my hometown of Salt Lake City uh, 18 years ago and went from a life and career in student affairs at two of the Claremont colleges in Southern California and started doing uh, high school college counseling when I returned. I've been a, me a member of NACAC and our regional affiliate for almost that entire 17, almost 18 years for Rocky Mountain ACAC. And I'm a past president of Rocky Mountain ACAC. And it was during my time of service then that NACAC approached me about the NACAC conference returning to our region because it had been in Denver a number of years ago. Um, and so I got the call and it's a it's a, a huge honor to have the conference return so quickly after Denver's conference and about 18 months of planning, you know, went into kicked into gear. Um, and when I got the phone call about serving on the LAC, um, because I'm on the high school side, there was one person who I knew I wanted to work with and have as a co-chair, and that's Mateo. He was the first person I called, so I roped him in. And what a great segue into Mateo introducing himself. <laughs> yes, Michelle, you definitely roped me in. It was that fateful phone call that I picked up and answered, and uh, that's how I got started with uh, being on the LAC and haven't looked back since. It's been fantastic. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Matteo Remsberg, and I currently serve as the Associate Director of Admissions for the University of Utah. I've been doing admissions recruitment work on the college side of things for about 22 years now. Um, had the chance to work at a couple small private schools, um, now at the, the state flagship here in Utah. And um, I've been a member of NACAC uh, pretty much the entire time. I've also had the opportunity to be involved in the Missouri ACAC and the Great Plains ACAC, as well as the Rocky Mountain ACAC. So um, this is very much um, what 
what I enjoy doing, what I love doing, and, and I'm very much passionate about helping uh, our students, our young people access higher education. Um, and I just get the, the double pleasure of actually working for my alma mater here at the University of Utah. Fantastic. And so, I mean, I have team NACAC here today. I mean, you guys are, I feel like, at least on your career side, you're, you're, you're born and raised NACAC, which is fantastic. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about the role of the local advisory committee. I'm not sure people that attend the conference know kind of all the ins and outs of what happens behind the scenes. So can you talk about, you know, kind of what you've been up to, you know, as, as committee members over the last weeks, months, I don't know, maybe even a year, uh, and about your roles and responsibilities then, and then also, you know, at the conference. And Michelle, why don't we start with you again? Sure. Okay, great. Um, so the LAC has been created, designed by NACAC to really serve as that advisory group of people, the people who are closest boots on the ground to the actual host city. Even though Rocky Mountain ACAC is a five state, we cover thousands of miles, you know, NACAC the leadership made it really clear to us that they really wanted folks from the greater Salt Lake City area because they want the conference to reflect the host city, the culture, um, all of the things that are going on locally and through the affiliate. So the advisory piece is the key word. You know, NACAC really looks to us as a committee of 14 people locally based to guide with all things, big decisions, themes, culture, food, you know, making sure that um, the NACAC, you know, conference leadership really truly understands things that are unique and special about the host city and the host affiliate. Um, Mateo and I, one of the first things that we did when we, when, when Mateo said yes, after I had said yes about the LAC co-chairs, is that we decided to look at the committee and have um, liaison groups that each of us would work really closely with. And so the groups that I work on the, uh, closely with on the LAC are the two co-chairs who are in charge of the counselor preview day for local counselors who are not already uh, members of NACAC or RMACAC and offering and designing a curriculum and a, um, an experience during the conference on the Friday of the conference. I also work with our hospitality chairs who do all things volunteering, all things that relate to volunteers. And hospitality, they are the face and the smiles of the conference, answering questions from where to eat to where is room 205. Um, and I'm also um, the liaison lead for registration, which is probably the absolute hoppinest social hub of the entire, entire conference, registration area. And then I've got the other three. So um, I work with the, the committee that is responsible for the college tours and giving an opportunity for our guests coming to Salt Lake City to really kind of explore the different higher ed opportunities that are available here in Utah. And we've got some phenomenal tours, um, even though we are a fairly um, large state in terms of where our uh, higher ed institutions are located. Um, they've all graciously jumped on board, and even our sister schools down south, Dixie and, and Southern Utah University, are offering special college tours, um, and those folks actually get to go through Zions and Bryce National, or National Parks, which is kind of a treat. Um, but then we've got our schools up north, so Weber and Utah State that are combining on tours, and then UVU. Utah Valley University and Brigham Young University are combining on tours for our guests. And then, of course, the University of Utah and Westminster College are providing tours as well. And those are starting as early as Monday. So there are definitely opportunities for folks to visit a variety of different campuses and different locations across Utah. Um, the other committee I work with is a special events committee. These are the party folks. Um, they're doing a great job. They're helping to um, provide uh, entertainment at the welcome reception on a Thursday evening. Um, we've even been 
they've done a great job. We've got a local uh, brewery that is creating a custom label beer for us for the um, at the social or I mean at the welcome reception and also the affiliate meeting. So we will have an admissions amber for everyone to try out with our own special label for NACAC. So we're really excited about that. Um, and then the logistics, and, and this is the one, this committee, they're in charge of all the kind of behind the scenes details, knowing where everything is going on, helping to get people where they need to be. Um, and, you know, they've, they're kind of chomping at the bit because their work doesn't really start until the conference starts. So, um, but they are very excited and, and ready to go. Um, we've got a lot going on and, um, you know, that I think that's been one of the, the fun things about being on this committee is the fact that, you know, we're able to help the, the national conference staff in, you know, providing some on ground support so that they don't have to take care of, of some of these things that we can handle. It also provides a great opportunity for folks to get involved and I would definitely recommend it um, if NACAC is coming to your town. Okay. I mean, so this is, I'll tell you, you just broke, it broke news. I mean, this might break the internet, right? This, <laughs> this news about the custom NACAC beer. I mean, this is, this is big. Well, I will be sending out, uh, I do a uh, takeover Tuesday next week. And so I will be giving a sneak peek of what the custom beer label is going to look like in, in my takeover Tuesday next week. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Well, we'll look forward to that. So, you know, going along those kind of same lines of the, the tips, tricks, and fun stuff that come along with the NACAC conference. Um, can you give some background or some tips for people that are traveling from all over the world, really, to come to the conference, to come to Salt Lake City uh, in the next few weeks? So we're talking about things like, you know, how do we get around? Um, you know, is, is Uber a thing? Is, or is it a lift town? Um, you know, how far is the airport, you know, from uh, the convention center? You know, what kind of weather should we be expecting um, for late September in Utah, those types of things. Sure, I'll, I'll go ahead and start. Um, one of the things I, I believe folks are gonna find pleasantly surprising is that Salt Lake itself is really easy to get around. We've got great public transportation. Um, the airport itself is about 10 miles from where the convention center is. Um, we do have a light rail system or a train that you can take from the airport right down within a block of the convention center and it's a 15, 20 minute ride and it'll cost you $2.50 to get here. Of course, you can access Uber, Lyft, cabs to get from um, the airport to all the local hotels. Um, the convention center is literally right downtown and within walking distance of all the conference hotels, a ton of fantastic restaurants to choose from, um, great venues just to go and relax and unwind at the end of the day. Um, and I think that uh, our guests are going to have a, a very pleasant experience. Um, and it, like I said, it's a very walkable um, city to get around. Is there like a particular food that, that just is synonymous with Salt Lake City? Fry sauce. <laughs> Fry sauce. <laughs> we have great, authentic Mexican food. Yes. It's amazing. And it's diverse in, in, you know, the types of options that are available from what people would consider really classic gourmet or uh, classic traditional all the way to kind of fancier, more gourmet. And so um, one of the places that's actually on the way from the airport to the downtown area that is, if you don't already know about Red Iguana, then you need to Google Red Iguana. Um, it's amazing. Um, and you will maybe want to be making some reservations if Red Iguana sounds like the type of place you'd want to visit because it is hopping and really super popular um, and conveniently located right between the airport and downtown Salt Lake City. This message brought to you by Red Iguana. Excellent. <laughs> uh, no, no, I mean, uh, NACAC, I, I know NACAC shuts down restaurants when, yes. when they're in. So, yes. Get your reservations early, for sure. Uh, absolutely. You know, I think one of the, the cool things about Salt Lake, and, and this is me speaking as somebody who attended the University of Utah as an undergrad in the early 90s, where I wouldn't say we were much of a food town to where we are today. And we have come a long ways. I mean, I would venture to say we're somewhat of a foodie town now, which is kind of interesting because I would have never thought that happening here in Salt Lake. 
So you can find a, a wide variety of food options and better yet, you're going to be able to find them right within walking distance or easy access to our public transportation. And if I could offer a fun fact about Salt Lake City being foodie in even the sushi and fresh fish category, which you think, huh, interesting. Great Salt Lake doesn't actually grow fish. So where does this fish come from? Um, because we are an international airport and Delta is um, one of the hubs here, there is fresh fish flown in daily from coastal destinations. So we actually have amazing sushi and fresh, fresh fish. So don't be weary, don't be afraid. If somebody says, let's go to Takashi, the sushi, sushi place downtown, um, it is fresh, we promise. And it didn't come from the Great Salt Lake. Nice, well, that, 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 that was my next question for sure. Um, all right, so I think we're good on the food. Yes. But let's talk a little bit about you know sightseeing. When, when the guests have some downtime, is there anything in particular that they have to see? Uh, and being a runner myself, uh, I'm going to at least get out for one morning run. So if, is there a particular loop or a particular route that I should be taking and kind of anything in else in between? Yeah. Um, because as Mateo celebrated, you know, in his statement that Salt Lake downtown is such a walkable downtown, everything's really close by. One of the most prominent landmarks, um, the Mormon Temple is right within a block's distance from the convention center and many of the hotels. And so it's a beautiful uh, temple square area, um, home of the Mormon, famous internationally renowned Mormon Tabernacle Choir. And um, that is absolutely quick walking distance from downtown. Um, the Great Salt Lake I mentioned, that is a very interesting, beautiful, very different um, site to see. My personal favorite are the local mountain areas and ski resorts, which are only 30 minutes from the downtown area. That includes Park City, which is an old silver mining town that still has maintained a ton of charm. Park City Main Street has tons of shops and restaurants to, to be able to, to enjoy all days and nights of the week. Um, we are the 2002 Winter Olympic host city. And so um, Olympic Park is right near just before you reach Park City. Lots of really fun um, museums and demonstrations going on there. They have the ski jumps running year round, not just in the winter. Um, also going a little further south, um, Snowbird Mountain Resort, um, it's Oktoberfest season. It's going on now. And so the weekend of Napak is still during Oktoberfest season. So those are some of my favorites also. Michelle, we want people to go to workshops too. Oh, right, workshops. <laughs> so workshops, workshops. But you know what's really been fun about answering questions about Salt Lake as a host city is that we've actually been getting a lot of questions about people wanting to build time either before the comp before the conference and staying maybe a day or two after, um, which is which is really great. That's what you should do. When you're not in sessions and when sessions are not going on. For that early morning run, Adam, State Street is a block away from the convention center. And State Street leads you to an area called Memory Grove which leads you to City Creek Canyon. Um, it is a beautiful canyon run that is directly accessible from State Street downtown, Salt Lake City. So that is the go-to place for those morning, afternoon runs, before and after sessions. So Michelle, you'll have to join Scott Klein, Jeremy Tears and I on our morning run while we're out there. But you, you may be busy, but we'll get you out. <laughs> okay, I might be a little busy. Mateo can cover for me. Okay. That's right. I'll uh, you go run. I will stay behind. No problem with that. <laughs> you know, the other thing, Adam, I would say is, you know, downtown Salt Lake has some really kind of amazing architecture. And, you know, one of my favorite things is to just kind of walk around and, and see the different places that are just downtown. Um, one of my favorite buildings, though, to check out is actually our public library that's on 4th South and like Second East. Um, it's some really unique architecture for a public library, kind of a fun place to go and, and hang out. 
Um, the other place that is is really easy to access, and if you just follow um, State Street and go up the hill north, you'll run into our state capitol. And that um, there's a phenomenal view from our capitol because it, it really it's up on the hill and it overlooks all of Salt Lake. And on the really clear days, you can see all the way down um, the valley to the point of the mountain. And if you go up at night, one of the things about Salt Lake is it's built on a grid. And so you can actually see State Street and all the street lights, and it's just literally one long street. Um, and it's kind of a cool experience to go up and that would be something I would recommend folks doing at night. Excellent, love it. I, I wrote all this stuff down, so I'll be sure to tweet out uh, Mateo and Michelle's, you know, top five spots uh, after we're done here. Okay, excellent. So everybody is kind of getting gearing up. We have about two weeks before uh, NACAC begins. So what are things that people should be doing now to get ready to make the, the journey out to Salt Lake uh, and NACAC? I would say the first thing, and you, everyone that's registered should have gotten an email this past week about um, downloading the app for the conference. I would definitely encourage doing that, um, getting the app set up, and then starting to review the sessions. I mean, one of the things that I always struggle with when I go to NACAC is wanting to um, attend so many different sessions at the same time, and I, I think this year is, is not going to be any different. And so, um, you know, that would be one of the first things. Um, the other piece of advice that I would get is that we are a very dry state and we're also at elevation. Um, so I would make sure that you are well hydrated before you get here and then make sure that you stay hydrated while you are here. This, this is helpful information, Mateo. You may have just saved someone from the East Coast there. I appreciate that. <laughs> Michelle, anything to add? How about, how about, how about from, you know, we, we, hundreds and hundreds of first time attendees will be coming out. So any advice for them in terms of, you know, kind of conference prep, but also what to do when they get there? Great question. Yeah. So, you know, NACAC, you know, really celebrates the fact that every single year we have a large number of first time attendees. And so there's the first timer session that folks will see either on the conference app or it, you know the conference website is fully detailed out with everything that's also on the app. And so first time um, attendees will see that there's the first timer session at 10 a.m. on Thursday. Um, tips for that, go to it. I think that NACAC, just by virtue of how excited we are to always celebrate that there's over 5,000 attendees you know, for somebody who is a first timer, when I think back to my first NACAC, um, it is, it's overwhelming. There are so many people, which, you know, makes you have this sense of pride, like, wow, there are all these people, we're all in this together, but it's also really intimidating. And so advice would be, be yourself, don't be shy. I know it's hard, even for the introverts, and there are introverts in our profession, lots of them. Um, introduce yourself and say hi to people. Um, when I think of attending NACAC and advice to first timers, it's kind of like the advice I give my students um, when I'm sitting down and talking with them and they're trying to decide like big school, we're at a very small high school here. And so same tips apply. You know, there are ways to make a big school and a big conference feel smaller. And so some of the tips I have for first time attendees is when you go to the welcoming open general session on Thursday, this big um, uh, exhibit hall is broken into affiliate seating spaces. And so you walk in and there's all the affiliate regional signs. Um, and so based on where you work, what state you're in, you have an affiliate that you can call home and sit with those folks because that will also introduce you to people that live and work nearby-ish, depending on how big your affiliate is. Um, and so look for that, that area of seating. Attend your affiliate membership meeting. Even if you're not a member, everybody's welcome. And so those people from the general session opening, 
then you will also have a chance to see them in a smaller setting. It's a way to make the conference feel smaller and meet some people. Um, NACAP does a game, Find Your Match. You know, the but you'll get a button or a pin or something at registration that has a number on it. So you will go through the entire conference looking for people who have your number. It's a great way to have a conversation starter because you will find, hopefully, among the 5,000 plus people, you'll find your match, have a conversation, go to the booth in the exhibit hall, give your names, be entered in to win some swag. It's awesome. Um, and so those are some of my tips for those first timers. Come to the first timer session, be ready to not be shy and introduce yourself and bring business cards. Bring stacks, just start handing them out. One year I forgot my business cards when I went to NACAC, I was very sad. Um, so those are good. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, that, those are that's amazing. I always wanted to be the guy that carried the affiliate sign. The sign, yeah. yeah. Like the Olympics. Yeah, exactly. We could have a, oh my yeah. gosh, Mateo. Yeah. We're having yeah, I'm new to New that. York, so shout out to New York. Uh, I'll be with you guys this year after years of representing New Jersey. But uh, so Mateo, you mentioned, uh, and get this for a segue. You mentioned that Salt Lake City is built on a grid. So let's talk about the agenda and how it's set up. Uh, and how does someone take this massive, um, well, most people are using the app now and, and trying to go through all of these different activities and, and events. And, and how can someone easily navigate the couple of days in, in Salt Lake City to get the most out of it? And that's why I say start early because there's a, a ton of stuff to choose from. Um, each day there are going to be different educational sessions. So um, on um, Thursday will be sessions A and B, Friday will be C and D, and then E, F and G will all be on Saturday. And so they are broken up and there are gonna be some that are gonna be geared more towards um, high school counselors, folks on the high school side, there are gonna be some that are more focused to the college side of things. Um, and then there's gonna be some that are just gonna be really open to everyone. Um, I think, you know, as I always approach it, I look at, you know, what are the things that I'm hoping to get out of the conference? Some of it is my own personal professional development, but I'm also looking for best practices. What can I uh, maybe learn from other, other presenters on things that I can bring back and, and enhance what I'm doing at my institution? Um, but it does take a while to kind of read through all the sessions and, and kind of break it out. And the thing that I like about the app is that you can identify multiple sessions that you're interested in. And I do recommend having like, okay, here's my primary and then here's my backup because there are some sessions that fill up and it's good to know, well, okay, here's what I want to go to if, if my first session is full. Um, if you're coming with other people from your school, I recommend really kind of looking through and seeing, uh, taking a divide and conquer approach, seeing what everyone is interested in going to. And, and there are going to be some sessions you may double up on, um, but it, it is a way that you can actually see more of the conference and then come back and, and compare notes and share. Um, you know, I think another great thing, and, and this is something that has been around for a few years, but you can actually purchase all the audio recordings with the slideshows um, for all the sessions. And um, you can do that during the conference and you'll actually get a discount if you do that. Um, I've been doing that now for the past several years because I bring it back and I share it with my team that wasn't able to go to the conference. Um, and we actually have them identify a session and then present it back to the staff, the rest of the team here. Um, so that we are trying to really maximize our exposure to the NACAC conference sessions. Um, I think a couple key things to note this year for those of you that are returning NACAC attendees is that the keynote is actually going to be moved to Friday now. Um, so that's a change in the schedule from past conferences. Um, you know, and that I think is going to be a good move. Um, the other thing that I'm, I'm really kind of interested in and, and is the featured sessions. And, and this is something that, you know, the NACAC conference staff really kind of pushed this year and, and asked for feedback from us in terms of potential speakers is being a little more intentional about who we might invite 
to present at the conference that will have a little bit bigger draw or a, a wider um, kind of interest level of things. And so those uh, featured sessions, um, I think are something special to be looking out for. The only thing I would add to that as a high school counselor is what I like to do when I'm looking at the agenda before NACAC is I think about the types of service providers, um, vendors who maybe I'm already working with, who maybe I'm thinking about you know, working with new people, new folks, new service providers, but I'll make a list of questions um, to go into the exhibit hall because we do have a ton of vendors. And so to pre-plan, just the way Mateo was suggesting you do that for sessions, I like to do that for the exhibitors, the vendors in the exhibit hall. I also, as a high school counselor, will do that um, for the college, counselor college fair. And so um, going, making a list, you know, there are specific colleges that I have questions about certain aspects of their application process or um, you know, scholarships, financial aid, access type questions, program questions. So I'll pre-plan and make a list of um, which universities and colleges I wanna make sure that I, I, I see during the counselor college fair on Friday afternoon. So planning ahead is a great way to make sure that you're maximizing the all that is to offer at NACAC. Yeah, absolutely. All good tips. I mean, I think Mateo, you 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 alluded to it. This idea that there's going to be some sessions that are really really popular in years past. Anything that had to do with coalition application, <laughs> test optional, get there early and bring coffee, um, and don't save any seats because you're going to get pushed in the middle uh, for sure. Um, so Mateo, I want to go back to you and, and from the college perspective, are there any? you know, maybe one, two, three workshops that kind of just jump off the page uh, for you that you definitely want to attend? You know, to be completely honest, because I'm on the LAC, um, we were told not to plan on attending any sessions. So I haven't even looked at this, the conference sessions in detail. Um, you know, I know I'm overhearing my staff talk about the sessions that they want to go to and, you know, not in terms of that I could actually pick them out, but I definitely hear that they're getting excited and it sounds like there's going to be some great sessions for the college side. Okay. Are you hearing anything from the, the high school side, Michelle? Yeah. You know, the ones that resonate, um, they're just annual favorites are the ones where colleagues, practitioners are sharing what they believe are some of the best practices and how they do the work, you know, how they, you know, work smarter, but not harder. Um, especially when colleagues from big public high schools have found ways to really serve hundreds and hundreds of students at a time. Um, and so I know that those are popular um, sessions that um, the high school counselors that I've spoken to are really excited. Um, and then, you know, in addition to kind of the nuts and bolts and how to do your job, maybe, you know, in a stronger, more personal, more effective way, are also those big picture sessions where we're really looking at the big issues, the big topics um, that really affect all of us and the work that we do to service and, and support students. One of the things that I always talk to my staff and, and if I go out there with a the team, I always tell, you know, if we, if we see each other in the same session, one of us have to leave, <laughs> you know, because there's really no point. And Mateo, to your point, you know, gather the information, bring it back, present on it, uh, use it as a training module, as a professional development opportunity once you get back to campus. But you want to get as much information as you possibly can. So spread out, you know, meet people from other other schools and, and attend with them. But, you know, if you're going with a large contingent, make sure you're getting uh, the biggest bang for your, your buck there. So when I think of NACAC, I mean, one of the things that I think of, and it helped me tremendously, particularly when I was starting out in my career, are the network gifts networking opportunities. Uh, and I know NACAC does a lot to try to, to push that as part of the professional development uh, opportunity for the for the campus. And Michelle, you already talked about kind of find your match and and uh, apparently we're having a admissions beer. But tell us, a, talk a little bit about, you know, some other ways um, that particularly younger professionals can really expand their network at NACAC. 
So we talked about this earlier, but having plenty of business cards on hand and when you know, I talk to my younger staff, my new staff coming in, like when you go and sit down in a session, look to look to the folks around you, introduce yourself, exchange business cards, find out, um, you know, where do they work? What are they doing? What are the challenges? Um, you know, we kind of have a set of questions that we we hand out to our staff as, as kind of good icebreaker questions, I guess, um, as, as a way to network. Um, I think the other piece of that is also not being afraid to go up after a session and talk to the presenter. Um, like I mentioned earlier, one of the things that I'm always looking for in sessions are best practices. And so I will go up and, and talk to presenters and, and ask them, you know, if they'd be willing to talk with me, you know, outside the conference or to send me um, information that they, they highlighted in their session. And what I've found is that, you know, while on the college side, you know, yes, in some ways we're all competing for students. At the same time, um, we're all higher ed professionals that we're trying to encourage students to go on to higher ed. And so there is a lot of great sharing opportunities there. Um, and so that's one of the other things uh, that I look for is, is how not only do I get best practices, but where are my opportunities to share some of the things that we're doing. I think another opportunity is the special interest groups. Um, and these are roundtable discussions that happen throughout the conference and you'll find them on the app. And it's a, a great way to meet folks that have a very um, similar interest to you. And it could be around particular um, populations of students. It could be around particular issues. Um, but it, it's a great way to engage in conversation and, and really kind of hear what's going on around the country. Um, so those are two of the ways that, you know, I really encourage my staff to to get involved and, and do some networking while they're at the conference. Yeah. And so in terms of, um, you know, kind of non workshop, non presentation related activities, I mean, what are some of the fun things, you know, NACAC has planned for the conference? I, I think I've done like beach Zumba before <laughs> and stuff like that. But Michelle, I mean, anything that you want to kind of highlight in terms of you know, maybe non-academic uh, fun for the group? It's, yeah, it's going to, my um, suggestions slash tips, things I'm looking forward to are going to range the full emotional spectrum. I'm looking forward to the Zen zone. I think I might be found there from time to time throughout the conference. Um, and so it's this really great, great area that um, the NACAC conference leadership has set up and you know, designated as a quiet meditation spot. Um, hopefully nobody's like on their cell phones in there. That would be violating the Zen zone. Um, we have yoga, yoga is returning. Um, and one of my, I know I mentioned this before, but in addition to those quiet meditative spaces, one of my personal favorite non-session spaces is the registration area. It, I love the social atmosphere of the registration space um and the exhibit hall you know we've got the dj in the registration space playing awesome music um you know 80s are still alive in my mind in my musical playlist um and the exhibit hall um you know if you need a snack or a cup of coffee during the conference that's another really fun non-session space however there are also these amazing sessions that are taking place throughout the conference in the exhibit space as well. You know, we have the tech hubs, the learning lounges, um, and they're not the, you know, educational sessions per se, but do not miss those when you're looking through the agenda. They are so great. They're typically smaller in numbers, um, and you can grab a snack and a cup of coffee and, you know, have some social time in the exhibit hall too as you make your way to those other learning lounges and spaces. I'm gonna get called out on Twitter. So I, I didn't actually do beat Zumba. That was, you know, oh. I, I think that was. <laughs> they track things like this. They I, know where you've been. Oh, I, that might have been San Diego. I'm trying to think, but I, I didn't do it, so I don't want to, you know, fake like I did. But yeah, <laughs> I mean, but that's all. But again, you know, it's just another way to network. I mean, if you go to a yoga session in the morning, most likely is everybody there. You're not gonna know, and you're gonna have an opportunity to meet different people and people that are on a different schedule than you are and, and, and the like. So, and, you know, I think the Zen zone being that we're all still dealing, at least on the college side, dealing with, you know, ball melt and all that stressful stuff, 
you know, I can go to the Zen zone and I'm sure with the, the new year kicking off in all the high schools, um, a little stress relief will be, will be welcome out in, out in Salt Lake City for sure. Um, let's talk a little bit about the vendor area. Michelle, you mentioned it as a place to kind of explore and, and, and learn about, but um, thinking about this from the vendor perspective, what would what do the vendors want us to know as as attendees? What what do they want us to know about, you know, exploring their space and, and kind of interacting with them? Absolutely. I think that they would want us to do a little bit of homework ahead of time, going back to that pre-planning. There's a full list both in the app and online um, who's coming, who's exhibiting, what vendors will be present. They want traffic. A lot of the intentionality behind NACAP conference staff having learning lounges and, and tech hubs and snacks and free, free food and coffee is to draw the attendees into this area um, so that we become aware of what vendors are there and take take a few minutes, take some time, make a list of the vendors that you know you think could provide help and service and support to you or the ones that you're already working with, but by all means, um, you know, NACAC relies on the vendors, the sponsors, the exhibitors, you know, in large part to make the conference what it is. And, you know, there's no better time than at NACAC to, to have face-to-face -face conversations. Because I know that when I get back to my office after NACAC's over with, um, with all best intentions, I think that I'll just, you know, instead of visiting with a vendor during the conference, I'll call them after, you know, the conference is over. I don't do it. It's just uh, life gets crazy and I don't do it. So take advantage of those face-to-face -face times because they're they're probably more meaningful. You're going to get more out of them. And the vendors want to see us. They want, they're really excited about the products, the services, the programs that they're working with. And they want to share that with us. Yeah, one of the pieces of advice I always give my staff, uh, and I, the pushback I always get is, well, I'm not the decision maker, so why am I going to go um, and, and introduce myself and get all this information and, and waste the vendor's time. But I think, you know, the people that I've spoken to and particularly, you know, people that are, are vendors in that higher ed adjacent space um, are so open to, to meeting with new staff with, with, you know, not the decision makers uh, and just to learn about their products. And, and, and they're very much interested in what we do. Um, a lot of them came from higher ed and moved over to you know, the business side of higher education. So I think that's a huge uh, piece of it as well. And then I can't tell you how many times, you know, I've had a really excited counselor or what have you come back from, from a conference and say, look, this is what I met. You know, this is a vendor that I met with. I think they have an awesome product. Uh, and that led to, you know, me meeting with them and ultimately us partnering with that person. So uh, I think it can be a really worthwhile experience. And, and it's, I think, you know, just from, a, again, a professional development standpoint and a networking standpoint, that side of the business is just as important as, you know, the workshops and things that you're going to going to go to over the over the days of the conference. So, yeah, I would encourage everybody to really take advantage of that. And then plus, it's just really cool people out there. I mean, there's there's really cool groups, uh, again, that really care about the work that we're doing. Um, so we're running low on time, but. Uh, I wanted to give you both an opportunity, and Mateo, we'll start with you, uh, both an opportunity with some final thoughts. I mean, what didn't we cover? Um, you know, what do you kind of want to leave the audience with before they get ready to come out to Utah? Well, I think, um, you know, I'm speaking on behalf of the, the LAC. We're, we are so excited to have everyone come and join us in Salt Lake and, and really kind of showcase what Salt Lake has to offer. Um, I, I think there's a maybe some misconceptions of, of who we are and, and what we do, but we uh, we have a great time here and it is a great place to, to visit, um, you know, and I think we're going to have a, a fantastic conference. Um, you know, the conference staff uh, at NACAC has been doing a, a fantastic job in getting things ready for everyone and it, it's gonna be a, a wonderful conference. I think one of the things I'm really excited about this year though is the merch shop. Um, where you can actually get and purchase NACAC um, swag, if you will. Um, and, and we got a sneak peek as to what's going to be available. And, and they're going to have some really cool things 
for people to buy. And so that way you're not trying to buy our um, conference vests and things like that from us because we want to keep them. But, um, you know, it's, it is going to be a great time. Um, some amazing sessions, you know, great presenters, great opportunity to network. And, um, you know, we're just really excited to have everyone come out. Awesome. Well, are they going to be, are they going to sell six packs of the emissions ale in the merch section? I don't believe so. Okay, well. But you'll you be able to get plenty during the, the welcome reception and your affiliate meetings. Yeah. So right. make sure you go right. to those. All right, great. Michelle, final thoughts? Um, I just, I, I'll echo a little bit of what Mateo said. You know, we are, we're so proud and um, as a RMACAC affiliate, you know, to be able to host again, you know, it wasn't that long ago we were all in Denver. Um, and to show um, the NACAC membership um, that Salt Lake City has come a long way since the last time NACAC was in Salt Lake City. Um, if we can host at the 2002 Winter Olympics and the world can come here and have an amazing time, we're pretty sure that we can host and bring the NACAC membership back to town and and have a really productive, inspiring daytime experience and a lot of fun having our reunions and our you know doing our networking after hours in our it's a, such a wonderfully walkable city. September, end of September, it's beautiful weather, cool mornings, warm-ish evenings. It's gonna be it's gonna be fantastic. And so it's gonna be everybody rest up. We've got a couple of weekends to take our naps and to stockpile some sleep because I hope we're not sleeping much during during the conference. This is gonna be great. It's gonna be great. Awesome. Yeah, I think everybody's really looking forward to it. It's a, it's a fantastic uh, time of year. Um, so I did get a couple of updates from kind of the Twitter sphere uh, in terms of you know meetups, and that's a big part of this. Obviously, not only do we have the official meetups with the NACAC affiliates and, and the like, but obviously vendors are going to be inviting you out to social events. Um, take advantage of that. Uh, and there are some groups um, that are going to have kind of meetups and tweet ups as well. Uh, one group that reached out to me was the Accept uh, Facebook group, um, which is, uh, you know, geared toward uh, acceptance in college admissions. They're going to have a meeting. Uh, on Wednesday at 3.30 p.m. Uh, so check out that the Accept Facebook group for more information on that. Uh, a group that I'm really involved in is uh, EM Chat, uh, hashtag EM Chat. Uh, and we always have a meetup at the event, which I think will be scheduled uh, you know, soon. So uh, really looking forward to those kind of things. And those impromptu smaller gatherings are awesome to see people we haven't seen since the last NACAC, which is great. Uh, I do want to apologize to the audience. We did have some technical difficulties for the first about 10 minutes or so of this broadcast. So uh, if you did uh, come on late, and I know a lot of you did, this will be reposted uh, immediately following uh, us signing off. And you can catch those first 10 minutes, which were great, because um, we learned a lot about restaurants and, and uh, running trails and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, uh, and this will also be available in podcast form through the iTunes store, and we'll get that posted out in social media uh, over the next day or so. Uh, but Mateo, Michelle, you guys were amazing. I love the energy. Um, just based on, you know, you guys, I know it's going to be an amazing conference. Uh, I want to say thank you to our uh, sponsor, M. Stoner. Uh, they make us go. And again, Michelle and Mateo, I'll see you in Salt Lake City. And thanks again for being on Higher Ed Live. Thanks for the opportunity. See you in a couple weeks. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.